Hey guys, Octane Restorations here, back with another restoration. So this is a Honda CH80, a Honda Elite 80, that we are going to be restoring today. We got this thing with the title, in a box for about 350 bucks, and so we're going to go over the assembly process and get it cleaned up and let's ride it. So, as you can see it was pretty much frame, engine, and wheels <laughs> when we got it. A problem with this is we didn't take it apart, so we didn't know where the parts went. So we had to rely pretty heavily on pictures on the internet. This is that box of parts that I was telling you that we got. And this is how we got it. So let's go ahead and get started. Right here, I'm just laying out the pieces, trying to see what, what all I have. If I have any duplicates, if I need any pieces. And right here, I'm literally just looking at pictures online and just trying to figure out where they go. <laughs> Some of the pieces are obvious. Uh, some of them are not so much. I've also got the carb to clean because it hasn't been running in a while. So right here I'm taking the carb off, getting that main jet out, and just cleaning cleaning that while we're while all the pieces are off. So there's the main jet. I couldn't get the camera to focus, but as you can see all that corrosion on the outside, it's pretty bad. So what I ended up doing is hitting it with a wire brush and then using a wire brush in the inside to clean it real good. So still just trying to piece things together. I finally figured out where that piece goes. <laughs> That's so I do get a lot of motorcycles that are partially disassembled. This is actually like my fifth or sixth one that I get where there's just a ton of stuff in the box and they're like, hey, I was going to work on it, got it all apart, but didn't want to finish it. That Goldwing, the GL1500, the white one behind it was the exact same way. And that one really did suck. This scooter wasn't bad. I think I had it fully assembled in, I don't know, maybe a day, two days. But Harbor Freight has these, I think it's 460 piece nut and bolt kits that are the metric sizes. So those are pretty good. If you know they don't keep track of the screws and everything like that, the nuts and bolts. That kit comes really handy. So right now just putting the headlight and the turn signals on. Just plugging in all those connections, making sure they worked, which everything that was off this bike pretty much worked. So I had to get a new air filter. The air filter was missing. I had to get an air filter cover box for it because that one was missing. And then just a few miscellaneous pieces here and there, but I'm going to go ahead. I've got the carb clean and I'm going to get the trunk on right now. And so then I'm going to go ahead and show you that it'll start up before we put on any of the other pieces. It really is crazy what fresh gas and a clean carburetor will do for these old machines. Pretty much any time anyone asks me to work on one or I get one coming through, that's pretty much one of the first things I do is I clean the carb. If it's been sitting for any amount of time or if it wasn't running right. Because if you've ever taken apart a carb, you know these holes are so tiny. You know they're the size of a piece of wire. Like a very, very, like the bristle on a wire brush. That's how small some of these holes tend to be. So I clean all the carbs. It's actually the original battery. So the trunk lid, the lock on it was broken. So that's what I'm replacing right now. Going ahead and I got a lock off eBay, I think for 10 bucks, 12 bucks. There's that 460 piece nut and bolt kit that I was telling you from Harper Freight that's all metric sizes so if you're working on Hondas, Yamaha, Suzuki's, Kawasaki's that 
it really does come in handy if you lose a bolt and misplace a bolt. Normally it's the same size threads as those motorcycles. There's that airbox cover. I ended up having to buy a whole new airbox because I couldn't find just the cover. So I bought a whole new airbox and stole the cover off of it and just kept that as a part. So we're using wash and wax from Driver's Choice brand, Meguiar Supreme Shine and Meguiar's Ultimate Compound, Simple Green, Black Magic Tire Wet, some leather cleaner and conditioner, and then some Gold Class Carnuba by Meguiar's. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. So these are some before pictures. I didn't get a very good video of it before, but it was pretty dirty. Uh, some of the reason I'm using some of the cheaper options is this is meant to be a budget build. So like that soap, you know, it's, it's a, you can get that bottle of soap for a dollar. So right here, I just wanted to show that you can get some pretty good results with some cheap equipment. So this is what we're up against. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get started with a pretty good rinse off. First, we got to get our products out of the way. The rinse off will get some, some of the stuff some of the major dirt off. We're not going to power wash it. This sponge is also from Dollar Tree, I believe. So I think I have, you know, maybe 20 bucks in cleaning supplies in. Simple green and a hard bristle brush does really well on rubber to get that, that grime and that dirt that's been soaked into the rubber. So I hit all the surfaces. I rinsed it off. Now I'm drying with a microfiber. And all in all, it's, it looks really good. So the tires cleaned up really well. They were in pretty rough shape. Now I'm going to use the Meguiar's Supreme Shine High Gloss Protectant on all the plastic pieces. The old plastic will absorb it and it'll give it a nice shiny look. The only problem with this is, is it does attract a lot of dirt. So if you're somewhere where it's real dirty, if you go down dirt roads, I wouldn't recommend using this dressing or really any vinyl or plastic or rubber dressing at all because it will attract a lot of dirt but as you can see there's the difference from what's rubbed off versus what hasn't been touched and it really does just restore that luster and restore that shine that it was missing spraying it on all the plastic and vinyl this is a before since we're going to plan on compounding that trunk because it's in pretty rough shape and this isn't a full, you know, you're going to compound it, then you're going to polish it, then you're ceramic coating it. Again, this is meant to be a budget build. So I got some Meguiar's Ultimate Compound that I had left over from another job. And I've got this, I believe it's a 9 inch orbital sander, orbital polisher that was like 20 bucks from Target. So there's the untouched side compared to the side that's been hit with the compound for, you know, you saw 30 seconds or so. So it's doing a really good job at getting some of that grime off. Would I do that now? No, I would do stuff differently. Now I have better tools. I have ran throw orbitals, but this was meant to be a budget build and that was the cheapest polisher on the market. So I'm using the leather cleaner and conditioner now. You don't want to put anything that's going to make the seat slick because that's all you're holding on to. <laughs> if you have to brake real heavy, uh, you can go sliding off of it. So just something to keep in mind. Don't use a leather conditioner and protectant that will make it real slippery. But just a nice healthy coating. It'll all absorb into the leather. So this next one's going to be pretty controversial using you know tire tire dressing on a scooter or motorcycle is always a pretty hot topic you know some people say if you get it on the treads it'll cause you to lay your bike down i try to keep it off the treads you saw i got it on it there but it'll all rub off you know within the first straight you take maybe if you come down your driveway and you take a pretty hard turn yes and that's an area I could see it causing a little bit of trouble, but I, most of my tires get tire dressing. So I'm choosing Meguiar's Gold Class Carnuba Wax, and I'm applying it to plastics, everything, you know. I'll even apply wax to glass. So we're spraying our microfiber out right there. 
now we're buffing off the wax that we applied as you can see it did create a crazy difference for the scooter just a good detailing did we're still missing that piece on the bottom but we got one ordered but this is what it's transformed into you know over the course of a 10 minute time lapse applying a good wax coating did an amazing job the wheels look great I was really impressed with how well the wheel paint looked. They cleaned up super nice. All in all, I'm very happy with this. And like I said, we got it for 350 bucks, so you can't go wrong with can't go wrong with that at all. So we got the floorboard in and we got the floor mat. So I realized at this point I had one of the supports installed wrong. So I had to take that off so that I could get the floorboard in right. No big deal, just had to take it off, put it back on. That is one of the problems that you'll run into for reassembling stuff that you didn't disassemble. Uh, pieces might be upside down, you might put them in wrong, just like I did that, but it's at this point, it's no big deal because I was able just to flip it, put the floorboards on, and then put that cover on. But all in all, I bought this scooter for 350 bucks. I think I might have had 40 $45 in pieces in it. I did have to replace the auto choke on the carburetor, which pretty much, pretty much has a wax cartridge in it. But there's the floor mat, just getting it installed in all the grooves. And then we're just going to wash it off real quick and hit it with some of that vinyl shine. Probably wouldn't do it again because it did make it a little slippery, but this is a scooter in the seated position, so it wasn't bad at all. So she's all complete. Let's go take her for a test drive.